A multimedia PC is a standard PC with some special components that allow it to combine sound, animation, video, and information in an exciting new way. In this tour, you will learn about the components that make up a multimedia PC and how they work together. At the heart is a base PC, to which is added a CD-ROM drive and an audio subsystem. Specific video display characteristics are also required. You'll also learn about performance criteria a multimedia PC must meet to earn the MPC mark, and why those requirements are important. Each of these subjects is covered in one of the five sections of the tour. To view the sections, click on the buttons at left. To run multimedia, you need to start with a relatively powerful standard PC, one with a fast microprocessor, extra memory, a large hard drive, and a floppy drive. The microprocessor is the brain of the PC, moving information from one system to another and performing calculations and operations. The microprocessors in most PCs are based on designs from Intel Corporation. They include the 80286, 386, and 486. Higher model numbers, such as 386 and 486, designate higher performance. Clock speed, which indicates how quickly the microprocessor can send information around the PC, is measured in megahertz. Common clock speeds are 20, 25, and 33 megahertz. A higher clock speed means faster performance. Random access memory, or RAM, is where the computer stores information temporarily as it moves from one part of the PC to another. This information can be accessed extremely quickly, and increasing the amount of memory will typically provide better performance. Since information in memory is for temporary use, it is lost when the computer is turned off. The hard disk stores information long term. Information stored on the hard disk can be accessed quite quickly, though not as quickly as information in memory. If you plan to create sound or animation files, you'll need a large hard disk, since these files can require a lot of storage space. 120 megabyte hard drives are now common. Floppy disks are used to store information and to transfer information to and from the computer's hard disk or memory. They are used to distribute many standard PC applications, but do not have enough storage space for most multimedia files. Typical floppy disks store 1.2 or 1.44 megabytes of information, and a one-minute audio clip can require from 700 kilobytes to more than 5 megabytes of storage. In addition, accessing information from a floppy disk is much slower than from a hard disk or RAM. The CD-ROM drive in an MPC is based on the same technology as a home CD audio player. The difference is CD-ROM discs can store computer programs, pictures, and video, as well as sound. A single CD-ROM disc can store large amounts of data, more than would fit on 500 floppy disks. This huge capacity is perfect for multimedia. For instance, a CD-ROM disc can hold an hour of music, thousands of images, or over 50,000 pages of text. Most of the information from the CD-ROM drive is sent to a CD-ROM controller. The PC then processes the information and sends it to the proper components, to the sound card for audio, or to the video display for animation or graphics. Most CD-ROM drives can also play CD digital audio, the same as audio compact discs. This audio is sent over a second connection directly to the audio subsystem for playback. The ability of the CD-ROM to combine data and audio makes it perfect for multimedia. Sights, sounds, text, and animation can all be played from a CD-ROM disc at the same time. The audio subsystem allows you to record, create, and play back sound and music. It consists of a sound card, or a set of chips, installed in the PC, plus a set of headphones or amplified speakers.
The audio subsystem performs several different functions. It converts sound from a microphone or other source to digital form for storage or editing on the PC. And it converts digital sound information back into analog for playback through the speakers. In addition, the audio subsystem includes a music synthesizer and a connection to the CD-ROM drive so that it can play compact disc music. The synthesizer in the audio subsystem works similarly to a keyboard synthesizer. In fact, a keyboard can be plugged into it. Synthesized sounds are created rather than recorded from live instruments. The synthesizer uses a language called MIDI, Musical Instrument Digital Interface. When a note is played, a MIDI command is sent to the synthesizer chip, which then produces the sound specified. Because synthesized sounds are stored as simple commands, they require much less space than waveform audio. Synthesizers that can play several notes at the same time, as in a chord, are described as multi-voice. If more than one instrument can be played at the same time, as in a band or symphony, the synthesizer is described as multi-timbral. Sound is typically represented as a continuous waveform. When sound is digitally recorded, samples of the waveform are captured at fixed intervals. The more samples that are taken, and the more information stored for each sample, the higher the quality of the sound. The sample rate, measured in kilohertz, describes the number of samples taken. Common sample rates are 11 kilohertz, 22 kilohertz, and 44 kilohertz. The sample size, usually 8-bit or 16-bit, indicates the amount of information stored for each sample. By adding a microphone to your MPC, you can record and play back waveform audio yourself. Most CD-ROM drives will also play audio compact discs. In an MPC, this compact disc audio is routed to the audio subsystem. Compact disc audio is very high-quality waveform audio with a sampling rate of 44 kilohertz and a 16-bit sample size. To open one of the audio examples, click on one of the four buttons above. When you are done, click on the button again to close the example. Click on these buttons to hear a MIDI instrument. Click on these buttons to hear 11 kHz and 22 kHz waveform audio samples. Click on the play button to hear a sample of compact disc audio played from the CD-ROM drive. The video display system draws the images and animation you see on your screen. It typically consists of a monitor and a video card. The capabilities of the video display in an MPC are important because many multimedia applications include rich color images and animation.
The image you see on the monitor is made up of thousands of colored dots, called pixels, short for picture elements. The number of pixels that can be displayed is called the screen resolution. It is typically measured in pixels across and pixels down. A higher number of pixels produces a crisper, higher quality image. Typical screen resolutions include MCGA, 320 by 200 pixels, VGA, 640 by 480 pixels, and XGA, 1024 by 768 pixels. Color resolution describes the number of colors that the monitor can display at one time. The more colors, the more lifelike the images will appear. Color resolution is measured by the number of bits used to store the color information for each pixel. With 4 bits per pixel, 16 colors can be displayed. 8 bits per pixel allows 256 colors to be displayed. Other color resolutions use 16 bits to display 32,000 colors and 24 bits to display 16 million colors, equivalent to the number of colors in a typical color photograph. Many multimedia applications use 256 color images. Multimedia applications require greater performance capabilities than many traditional software applications. Data from standard PC applications is moved in blocks. Multimedia data often must be transferred from the CD-ROM in a constant stream. In addition, an MPC must handle audio, video, and other data simultaneously. Recognizing these new performance needs, the MPC specifications require or recommend standards for key components. This section describes the MPC specifications and why they are important. It is important to start with a fairly powerful base PC. The MPC specifications require that the base PC have at least 2 megabytes of RAM and a 30 megabyte hard disk. 4 megabytes of RAM and 120 megabyte hard disks are common. Because the microprocessor must simultaneously process information from the CD-ROM, display images, and send data to the audio card, its speed and efficiency are important. The MPC specification requires a 386SX or higher microprocessor. 386DX and 486 microprocessors are often used. Since many multimedia applications are run directly from CD-ROM disks, the performance of the CD-ROM drive is critical. One measure of the CD-ROM drive's performance is seek time, the amount of time it takes the drive to find a file on the disk. The MPC specification requires an average seek time of one second or less. 500 milliseconds or less is preferred. Another measure is the CD-ROM drive's data transfer rate, the speed at which it can deliver information to the PC. The MPC specification requires that the CD-ROM drive sustain a data transfer rate of 150 kilobytes per second while using less than 40% of the PC's capability to process information. CD-ROM drives that do not meet these specifications may not be able to stream audio or video information acceptably. This will cause the audio or video to distort or break up. The MPC specification for the audio subsystem requires the following an internal MIDI synthesizer with multi-voice and multi-timbral capabilities, playback of 11 kHz and 22 kHz 8-bit waveform audio, as well as the recording of 11 kHz 8-bit audio through the microphone jack, playback of compact disc audio. The MPC specification requires VGA or higher resolution. Animation and video require screen images to be moved very quickly. To do this, the microprocessor must be able to move large amounts of information with great speed. Here we can see the number of pixels that must be changed just to display one frame of the animation. Moving images may look slow or choppy on video displays that don't meet MPC specifications for display speed. 